we talk about Michael Shannon quite a bit yeah, on that's this right. show, but you know we can't talk about him forever. Surely there are other actors and or actresses who deserve our adulation. People who are on their way up, and and we're hoping that they achieve the level of shandosity yeah. that Michael Shannon has achieved. That's right. So my question is, who is the next? Michael Shannon for Welcome to the Basement. I like that Adam Driver kid. So who's that? He's on Girls. He plays Adam, the big lunking. Oh, that yeah, long faced uh, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, he was in Lincoln as the guy who says, "Well, maybe, maybe some of us." Okay, I, I can see that. Yeah, the actor that I have in mind embodies a lot of Shannon esque qualities. He has the same calm intensity, and he has a similar odd facial structure to Mr. Shannon. Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen. Oh! You may know him as Le Chiffre in the Bond reboot Casino Royale. That's right. Or on the small screen as Hannibal Lecter in the NBC series Hannibal. And I can't wait to see where his career goes from here. I think a lot of cannibalism. Just because you play you one have, cannibal. You have to hire Europeans to play Hannibal Lecter. Anthony Hopkins, who played him in Brian... Brian Cox. Brian Cox, who's my favorite Hannibal. And also in that uh, cannibal movie that came out there with... Uh, Robert, Robert Carlyle. Yeah. yeah. English! America, where are your cannibals? That's a bad way to end this. It's only the beginning, Matt. Only the beginning. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Welcome back, Matt, to your basement. This is the second half of our Sci-Fi July, in which you have given me the choice of eight sci-fi movies that you have never seen before. We watched Dark Star on the last episode, and we had our viewers vote on which movies they think Craig should pick for Sci-Fi July, and I have the rankings here. The far, far favorite was Starship Troopers, oh. and then a lot of them were pretty much equal. Fantastic Planet, Soylent Green, Gattaca, and Logan's Run pretty much had the same amount of votes. Barbarella was also highly ranked, but slightly below, and then bringing up the rear, our beloved Dark Star, and Quatermass and the Pit. Apparently it's it's pronounced Quatermass. The movies that you gave me were of two eras. We have the ones from the late 60s, mid 70s, and then you have two from the late 90s, specifically 1997. Since we did one of the older ones, we're gonna be doing one of the two less older ones this time. So this narrows it down to Gattaca and Starship Troopers. You also know my feelings about Ethan Hawke. You don't like him. Nope. Gear up, you ape! Get ready for the drop! We're watching Starship Troopers! I didn't expect that to be shouted at me. (laughs) Well, you better get used to shouting. Well, folks, in the interest of full disclosure, we are taping this episode a few weeks before Rift Tracks does their riff on Starship Troopers. Uh, If you watch the Rift Tracks thing and see any similar riffs, uh, we didn't steal anything, because this is happening before their thing. Based on Robert Heinlein's classic 1959 novel of the same name, S.T., stars Casper Van Dien, Denise Richards, Neil Patrick Harris, and a whole bunch of other adorable types. Luckily, they have Welcome to the Basement Hall of Famer and living embodiment of authority, Michael Ironside, leading the charge. In preparation for this episode, I read the book. You read the whole book? (laughs) The whole book. Even, (laughs) even like... Of course I read the whole book. You read a book? I know. And I got you... Ugh, a gift. It's a little heavy. I love gifts. Oh. It's a scented candle. A citronella candle ah, that will keep, keep away the... the bugs. That's right. I know you're more of a pacifist. You don't like to kill things. So it's probably best if we just had a deterrent on your back patio. I do like to kill bugs. You do? I'm in, I'm a little bit of a starship trooper in that way. Oh, well, there, there we go. Let's basic train ourselves over to the big leather couch to watch Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers. like a Woody Allen font. <laughs> Join the mobile infantry and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. You get to take a naked shower with Denise Richards. <laughs> Off in the future, Johnny Rico's about to graduate from high school. He's learning civics the hard way from his Rico. hard-ass teacher, Mr. Ratchek. Pay attention. Uh, evidently, the other side is the uh-huh. iron side. This year we explored the failure of democracy. And the failure of me keeping my arm from looking like a potato. And considering going into the military to fight the space bugs that are constantly attacking Earth. He also has a girlfriend 
Carmen Ibanez, <laughs> who likes to make googly faces at him in class. Hiroshima was destroyed. Correct. Good job, goofy face. <laughs> but there's another girl who also has her eye on Rico, the fiery redhead, Diz. Johnny also has a friend, Carl. You're not fooling anyone, Neil. <laughs> Johnny plays indoor future ball. And there's a guy named Xander on the other team who Johnny doesn't like. Xander's also got his eye on Carmen. Against the wishes of his parents, Johnny joins the infantry. His best buddy Carl is sent off to become a psychic. While Carmen goes to flight school. He arrives in boot camp and he meets Sergeant Zim. Zim does the typical drill sergeant routine, but with more violence. Diz, the fiery redhead, has also joined up with the infantry. What makes you think you're good enough? Tits. Johnny has a good time in boot camp with his pals, Diz, and a big tooth goon <laughs> named Ace. Hey, can me and my front teeth sit down here? I like to call myself Young Busey. He is Young Busey, he's Jake Busey. Is he really? <laughs> Called it. Movie's getting distinctly Spielberg-y. <laughs> At flight school, Carmen finds out that Xander, the douche on the other football team, is her flight instructor. Solid math, a little wild on the stick, but a natural. Stick part of that sentence, a double entendre. Math, maybe a double entendre. <laughs> I don't know enough about math. What are you talking about? You made squad leader on your own. Is there the equivalent of midichlorians for, like, the Busey family? <laughs> Certain of them have more of whatever is the substance that makes them most Busey-like, because that kid is off the scale. busey chlorians. Johnny messes up during a, a, a maneuver and gets a guy shot in the head. Whoa, oh shit. He gets hit with a whip. 10 lashes. It looks like the, the tip of the whip was dipped in sriracha, and Johnny decides to wash himself out and go back home. It really stinks you going. She's dressed like someone from CNC Music Factory. <laughs> Just then, the bugs attack Earth, wiping out Buenos Aires, Johnny's hometown. His whole family is dead, along with around 10 million other people. It's all out war, and Johnny unquits the infantry. What do you want, Rico? I wish to reconsider my request to drop out, sir. Let me join back, or I will open a, a me case against you and show a history of organized crime. <laughs> that joke makes no sense. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm from Buenos Aires, and I say kill them all! Anytime someone walks up to a camera and goes, Let me tell you something! <clears throat> they should have to pay Jesse Ventura royalties. <laughs> and off he goes into outer space. They go down onto a planet to fight their first battle with the bugs, and it goes badly. A hundred thousand of the troops are killed, and so is Johnny, or so it seems. Carmen thinks Johnny's dead. Turns out Johnny didn't die. They're keeping him some sort of big tank. Hey, Johnny! Hey! Don't pound on the glass. It sounds like shotguns going off to him. <laughs> Zonny get... Zonny. Johnny gets assigned to the Roughnecks. <laughs> oh, right in the teeth. Oddly enough, if she punched him in the gut, she'd still hit him in the teeth. <laughs> They're joined by Lieutenant Radchek. Oh, here he is, old potato arm. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows what he's doing. He's got his full old arm back. <laughs> they go back down to the planet, and now they're ready to kick some thorax. I'm just here to fight. Jake Busey, walking, talking, mad magazine drawing. <laughs> Lieutenant Ratchik throws a party. Yes, black man, dance to Dixie. <laughs> and he and Diz make sweet love. I wish I was. In the land of cotton. <laughs> Draw a, a, an eyes and a nose on my chin and turn me upside down. <laughs> Some girls are into that. <laughs> and I'm one of those girls. <laughs> they find an outpost that's been totally wiped out. And the radio operator, he's got a big old hole on top of his head and his brains are sucked out. Ah! And then the bugs descend on them. More bugs than they've ever seen. For some reason, whenever I'm at my parents' house and I turn on cable, this scene is playing. I've seen this scene probably 20 times and never anything else in the movie. They have a Sarlacc pit! Lieutenant Radchek is killed in action. Chopped in half like a man! Diz is killed. And Diz dies in Johnny's arm. 
Arms. Arms. He has two arms. <laughs> Back on the ship, they run into Carl again, who tells them about a new type of bug that no one's ever heard about. A brain bug. We're going back to P to capture that brain. And he takes his crew back down to planet P to find the brain bug. The bugs are shooting down spaceships with their farting. <laughs> Carmen and Xander crash land onto the planet. Now that's pod racing. And suddenly they're descended on by bugs and they're stabbed with the bug legs. Oh no, what just happened to him is no damn good. <laughs> out comes the brain bug. The brain bug's gonna suck out their brains. He sucks Xander. Cronenberg pornography right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking out his brain into that big gaping vagina. <laughs> Johnny and his dudes show up with a little bomb, and then the brain bug gets nervous and scuttles away. They blow up all the bad guys except for the brain bug, but the brain bug was captured by none other than Zim. And at the end of the movie, everyone is encouraged to join the military. So go out and do it, I guess. How did you like this movie, you worthless ape, you? I enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting that. I really was excited about the plot most of the time. Well, the action kind of had a purpose and the action mattered. It's because it was Paul Verhoeven who was doing it. He is the guy who gave us Robocop and Total Recall, which are two of the most enjoyable action movies of the era that this movie came out. Now, when this first came out, the I think the reception was pretty bad. And yeah, and didn't make much money either. It was a $105 million budget, and I think it made 121 if I remember. Which is not enough. No, I, I no. think a, a Hollywood movie needs to make at least twice its budget to recoup you know, everything they have to spend. Yeah. Why do you think uh, it got such a bad reception? It might be the choice of actors. Denise Richards. The Zac Efron of the day. <laughs> She's pretty terrible. You just realized this about Denise Richards? She's pretty bad. Disastrous casting choice. I mean, I haven't seen dead eyes like that since Burt Reynolds in In the Name of the King. But what makes it particularly disastrous is that the character doesn't have to be there. That character is really minor in the book. Okay. She is written out about 150 pages in. To make her, like, kind of co-lead and then to put some Denise Richards on top of that. It just wasn't worthwhile. When Clancy Brown or Michael Ironside show up, it really shows how bad the rest of the cast is. This was after the first Gulf War. Yeah. So it seemed rather jingoistic. Verhoeven said that the movie's a satire yep. on propaganda films and everything. Which, obviously, people didn't yeah. get. Heinlein's novel is very pro-military, mm -hmm. and he tried to deny it later on, but there's no way around it. So I think maybe a problem with this movie is it's not enough of a satire. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like MASH. Yeah. Oh, it's not like RoboCop, which right. works as a really solid satire of the Reagan era, of cops versus robbers, and things along those lines. There's certain things where I certainly hope it was satire, like when Neil Patrick Harris shows up as a colonel at the end of the movie, and he's basically dressed as a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> this movie does something very typical of Hollywood. In throwing in the romantic subplots, it makes these huge momentous moments where all these people's lives are on the line about just a handful of people. Well, I mean, don't you think that humanizes it? If we're focusing on these small amount of characters, theoretically you can more empathize with them because you've seen their human qualities and you've seen your own self reflected in them. Don't you think that makes the disaster more real? Well, it, it does to a certain extent, and it also gives you a point of view to follow the disaster through. Right. And, and then if you look at Black Hawk Down, which is an amazing movie... It's very hard to follow because you're seeing it through a couple dozen points of views going throughout Somalia. Right. How about that gore? It was very gory. This has no problem chopping someone in half and having guts fall off. I'm all for that. Multi-hundred million dollar action movies, they're not R-rated anymore. They're, yeah. all, they're always PG-13, mm -hmm. so you know we're not going to see another movie like this probably. No. Ever. Don't forget to check out our website, welcome to the basement show com. And also, we have our PayPal button, which you can click on, and that way you can donate money to us. Some of our recent donors are... Michael, who says, This is user Ewig, who you helped to identify the lost weekend. Love you guys. Eric, Spencer, Linda, William, Christopher, Patricia, Moritz, Marius, 
Ninth Evolution, who writes, Love the show and immensely enjoy hearing your takes on cinematic masterpieces and ones not so much so. P.S. Blue Velvet is my favorite movie of all time. Julian, who writes, Donating to thank you for the Fitz Cardboard Aldo suggestion, which blew my mind with smiles. Us too. And Harvey, who writes, Don't stop making this show. I just watched Gattaca, Soylent Green, Logan's Run, and Fantastic Planet because you might talk about them. Oh. I'm sorry to say we didn't. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. David Vero writes, I just started watching your show and I love how confident you are with your opinions. Neither of you appear to care about what someone will say about you if you tell the truth about what you think. It's refreshing to hear an intelligent conversation that doesn't tiptoe. Tiptoe. Are you tiptoeing? A little bit. Don't tiptoe. You don't want to hear my, I don't want to say my opinions on tiptoeing. <laughs> And lastly, our old friend Name of the Rose has an interpretation of the nightmare that I had where Craig was a tour guide of a haunted church. I thought you were going to say what the dream really was. Your fear that Craig couldn't handle taking over the hosting of this episode and that it would destroy you. Craig went into the basement. The church is the holy place of your sacred love of movies. The ghosts are the movies because they are ethereal reminders of their first incarnations. Well, that's a very intelligent interpretation, and uh, I think uh, I am afraid of Craig messing up the show. You could still screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for Seen It. Seen It! Counter Nerd writes, The Graduate, 1967. It's truly a great movie. Seen It. If you like The Graduate, check out the book Pictures at a Revolution. It is about the filming of The Graduate and the other four movies nominated for Best Picture in 1967. What, what, what do you have to say about the movie? Around the eighth time, I think it kind of hit the saturation point. I'm You've like, seen it eight times? Yeah. I don't know if I can find anything more in this movie. Well, forgive me if I don't shake your hand. I don't remember. It's been 15 years. You've seen it eight times. You don't remember that line? It's been a long time. You else. call yourself a graduate. R3G0S4RIF3, because there were no other names available. Have you seen A Simple Plan directed by Sam Raimi? Yes, I've seen it. Seen it. I think that Billy Bob Thornton gives one of the best film performances of all time in that movie. Yep. Ah, man, yeah. Don't get into a situation with your brother where you uh, have to hide money. A Dude Named Kemp, Cold Souls, starring Paul Giamatti. Seen it? A very good movie, though it unfortunately loses its witty edge and goes full drama by the second half. I really enjoyed its sense of humor and hated to see it go. Seen it? Not seen it. I have to say I disagree with you. I did not like Cold Souls. It sort of wanted to be being John Malkovich. You know, Paul Giamatti plays himself. There's lots of things about kind of swapping bodies and swapping personalities and stuff like that. The movie attempted to be really deep and philosophical, but it came off as a little trite and kind of dull. And actually, I don't remember much of it. Ah, uh, but I should see it because I'll watch anything with David Strathairn in it. I love that guy. <laughs> Ian Knopper asks, Have you seen Jim Jarmusch's Coffee and Cigarettes? It's a compilation of various actors, musicians, and comedians having conversations while they drink coffee and smoke. Damn, of course I've seen that movie, Bill Murray. I've seen it as well. Coffee and Cigarettes is a very fun movie, but it takes a long time to gain traction. It's sort of like a, you know, a grab bag of snacks. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you pull out a, a one of those little dried apricots, you know, yeah. nah, that's, that's no good. And sometimes you get like a chocolate covered almond. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, mmm, this is tasty. <laughs> Samantha Watainen. Hey guys, I'm a really big fan of the show. I was wondering if you'd seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? A rather obscure film, but it's one of my favorites. Samantha, I think you're showing your age a little there, because when Craig and I were young men, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was anything but obscure. And it's a very dark film. It's not a children's film. It was Chinatown with cartoons. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Seen it! Seen it! Kate Guillemet asks, Have either of you seen Singing in the Rain starring Gene Kelly? It is my favorite movie and a classic, cl classic that is worth seeing. Seen it! I'd get home from the bars back when I was in college and I would just toss in the Singing in the Rain tape and watch like 10 minutes of it before going to bed. Just so I could go to bed happy. There you go. For once. Forget the sadness of the bars. <laughs> That's right. We should yes. probably wrap this up. Oh, well, are you saying that's seen it and that's our show? That, <laughs> that was seen it and that was our show. Thank you all for coming today to The Basement. Make sure you check out our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. Don't make bugs angry enough that they drop huge rocks on you. Good night, folks. Good night. The brain bug is going to suck out Carmen's head 
but she's got a hidden knife and she slices off the proboscis. Proboscis? Proboscis. Isn't it proboscis? I've never heard that word before. Proboscis? I've heard proboscis. Doesn't sound right. She slices off the sucker. I'm from Buenos Aires and I say kill them all! 